Hi, I'm Caitlin and this is Book Chats and today I'm going to haul all of the books that I have acquired since I started my wrapping project. It's been about six to eight months since I wrapped everything so there are a lot of these. There are not supposed to be that many of these. I am not supposed to have acquired this many books. In no particular order I'm going to go through all of these books. I'm going to start with one that is not, a, not even ever going to make it to wrapped because I'm going to read it and then give it away and that is Fire and Fury Inside the Trump White House by Michael Wolf. It's just not I think what people expected it to be. Anyway I bought this because we were talking about reading it for a book club at work. What I'm going to end up doing is literally bring it to work and being like you guys can all just pass amongst yourselves like I don't care to keep it because I definitely don't care to keep it. Next I have two of these and I have a third somewhere and I just can't find it um, but kind of on a whim slash as a joke uh, on sale at my library bookstore I bought some romantic suspense novels. One of them is Wilderness Peril by Elizabeth Godard and this is like about like peril in Alaska um, and the other I had to buy this because of the title because it's literally like you'll understand when you see um, secret agent, secret father. I just, how could you not? And then when I opened it, it's like, it's not like large print, large print, but it's definitely larger than normal print, which like doubly makes me laugh. Anyway, um, these are two and I had a third and I just, it's wandering around my apartment somewhere, but I will find it. And then I also got at the same time for me, a very NASCAR holiday, which is like three short story NASCAR romances because they're how I got into reading kind of romances and I just want to see whether or not they're as silly as I remember them to be but also guys like I learned a lot about NASCAR from reading NASCAR Harlequins okay so everything I know about NASCAR I learned from romance novels. The next book is one I bought for my book club because I was waiting for my library to get it and it literally took them I think like two months to get this in and by then I'd already had to read it for book club. So that is Not Your Sidekick by C.B. Lee. I actually didn't end up finishing it. This is one that I was weak. Uh, it was recommended to me by my friend Morgan from Little Word Weaver and I saw it at the library on sale at the library bookstore and I just couldn't resist. And that is The Good Thief by Hannah Tinty. There's a whole theme of I walked into the library bookstore when I had no business being there among these books and those are some of them and this is one of them. It's Shadow Scale by Rachel Hartman. I own and love the first book in this series and I have been wanting to read this one since it came out but I'm also very deeply intimidated by it and so I thought if I buy it I have to read it. Again, walked into the library bookstore, didn't have any business being there and I saw Speak Easy Speak Love by Mikhail George. I heard about this book because I was part of the YA Booktube Awards historical fiction category this year and when we were discussing on the judges which books we might have to read this one is one that came up on the list. Kales from Kales Corner highly recommended it and it is like a retelling and a historical at the same time. It's a retelling of a Shakespeare play I think. Oh yeah yeah much ado about nothing. It's much about do about nothing in Jazz Age New York. This is the one that I knew when I started my project would be coming to me still because I had pre-ordered it as soon as I could pre-order it. So it was like the very first one that I acquired after wrapping everything and I was like oh I'll read it really fast and that'll be fine and I still haven't picked it up. And that is Because You Love to Hate Me, 13 Tales of Villainy, edited by Amory. Um, a bunch of booktubers, some of whom I am like friends with or have met and some authors that I know and adore all kind of collaborated on this book and that's why I bought it to support them. But I'm not actually like a huge villain person so it's not necessarily really my kind of book so someday I will pick it up and read it and then we'll see what I end up doing with it but that is where that is at. This is Dear Martin by Nick Stone. Um, it's a pretty short book so hopefully I can get it through it quickly and then I will probably pass it along to one of my friends who teaches for her classroom library and then this one was also a library bookstore purchase and that is Jane Unlimited by Kristen Kishore. I'm not sure if that's how you say her name but I'm going to guess that it is. It's kind of a choose your own adventure book by the author of Graceling, which I really didn't like Graceling, but I really liked Fire and Bitter Blue. I also kind of liked, I think Fire is actually my favorite of that series. I'm interested in seeing what this is like as sort of like a novel that has like choosable paths. And then this is also a library bookstore purchase and that is what Came From the Stars by Garrity Schmidt. I bought this just because it's an actual ex-library copy, so it was super cheap, something like 25 or 50 cents, and it is by one of my favorite middle grade authors. He is amazing. It's, so I saw this one, and I think it has kind of like a fantasy bent to it, so I'm really interested because everything I've read from him before was um, like con like set in our world, either historically or contemporary, but like not fantastical in any way. So this one sounds like it might have like some fabulism maybe. I'm not sure. So I'm gonna see um, what it is like. 
this is the only book in the stack that I had already purchased before I did this, but like somehow it just missed the pile when I was wrapping everything. So now I have to wrap it up as well. And that is Wind Witch, a Witchlands novel by Susan Dennard. But it's good that this is in the stack because one that I actually didn't bring up with me, but that is like literally sitting on my table downstairs, is Sight Witch because Susan, um, when she had to change her tour because the publication date of Sight Witch got pushed back a couple weeks, she suddenly was going to be in Austin. So I drove up for her signing. I have not actually read Wind Witch yet. So this is going to have to get wrapped and put on the shelf. And then Sight Witch will go in my sequels pile because I don't wrap the sequels because I don't want to like unwrap a sequel before I've read one. So now we're going to get to a tiny section, which is books that I was given as gifts. So these ones are not my fault. In fact, I like always forget that people sometimes give me books as gifts because my own family does not give me books as gifts because they know that I have a problem. My friends are wonderful and sometimes they give me books as gifts and I am deeply grateful and that's what these next couple books are. Um, the first of those is Black Flowers, White Lies by Yvonne Ventresca. This is a book that a friend of mine um, knew the author growing up and she bought me a copy. It's not necessarily my normal genre. I think it's kind of more of a thriller-y thing but I really am interested in seeing what it is like. So I will definitely give that a shot. I got this one from a friend of mine who actually, I'm like sending her books all the time for her classroom library, but um, she gave me a book for my collection and that is Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sapetis. I have read um, Ruta's first novel, Between Shades of Grey, and uh, cried like everyone else does, and I've heard amazing things about this and that it will make me ball. So someday, I guess, when I need a good cry, this is what I'll have to pick up or hopefully unwrap. This book uh, is actually a coloring book, so of this whole stack, this is the one that won't end up being wrapped because I don't wrap my coloring books. This was a gift from my book twin, Stephanie, for Christmas, and it is Boss Babes. It is a coloring and activity book, so it has like coloring, but also like mazes and just various kind of fun activities. So when I am stressed out or just otherwise need a distraction, this will be a great thing to pick up. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And this book was also from my book twin, Stephanie, and that is A Million Junes by Emily Henry. This is a book that Stephanie, I heard really good things about all of 2017. I intended to read it. I checked it out from the library a couple times and I just never got to it. And then Stephanie got to it and loved it. And she was like, you have to read this and gave it to me as a gift. So this is one that I hopefully will be getting to relatively soon. And all of the books that I got as gifts that I have not read when I wrap them, they're going to be my new pink paper books. So I unwrapped all my pink paper books so that I could read or get rid of them and then pre-order the book I wanted to pre-order. Well, now that wrapping paper is going to get repurposed and it's going to be my books I receive as gifts paper and it's going to be the same kind of rule where I have to read all or unwrap all of those before I can order the next book I want to order. So that way I make myself get through kind of gift books faster. This book was also a gift from my book twin Stephanie, but luckily I've already read this book so it doesn't have to go wrapped on the shelf. And that was Tell Me Three Things by Julie Buxbaum. I just felt like this um, on the surface seemed like it was going to be such a fluffy kind of uh, story and plot but then ended up being very deep and meaningful even within sort of the fluff of the plot and I really loved and enjoyed it a lot. So now we're back to books that I bought for myself because mm. I have no self-control uh, and one of those is Unraveling by Sarah Ella. She has a great YouTube channel and this is the second book in her trilogy. I bought and read her first book Unblemished um, and I have not picked this one up yet but the ending of Unblemished made me very excited to see where she would go. So hopefully sometime soonish I will get to this. This is a book that I've been intending to read for a long time and I was weak at a bookstore. It was a great price and I just decided to pick it up. And that is Ancillary Justice by, by Anne Leckie. This was recommended to me by Jane from Yes Miss Jane. Basically uh, in this society the narrator of this book like doesn't really understand or parse gender or like their language doesn't have like gender distinctions so the narrator just chooses to refer to every single person in the book as she and sometimes the narrator is actually corrected because a different pronoun is the preferred pronoun but it's just like the idea of reading a sci-fi book in which everyone by default is a she until proven otherwise is like so exciting to me. This next one is actually one I'm keeping it in the haul in in order to, I actually like previously filmed this haul and I'm refilming it um, partly because I forgot a couple books and partly because of this and that is that I'm keeping it in the haul in, in kind of 
um, transparency wise, but I actually am, now that I pulled this, I'm going to walk it out to my recycling bin and recycle it. And that is because of some things that have come out about the author since I bought it and read it. I had previously read this, I had an idea that I was going to make a video talking about it, and now because of the um, information that has come out about the uh, author basically sexually harassing other people in publishing um, and other things, I can no longer in good conscience um, actively promote this book on my channel. And that is The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexie. I'm really disappointed in everything about the circumstance, but especially in myself because I wanted to use this book. I think it is like, it was meaningful for a lot of reasons when I read it, but I also think that it doesn't mean that I can't find another book that is meaningful in a similar way, and so I want to use this as an opportunity to push myself harder to find something to use kind of in place of this book in that video I would have filmed. So I'm like, I already checked my recycling officially accepts paperback books, and I'm just going to recycle it. These next two are books that I picked up on sale from my library bookstore. So I picked up Bleeding Violet by Dia Reeves, which I have had on my TBR for literally years now um, and thought that I would have an opportunity to pick up that way. And then I kid you not, guys, this is the second copy of this book I have purchased, but the copy that I own is um, with my parents at their house because it is signed in like my signed book collection there. So I purchased a second copy to sort of force myself to read it. Um, and that is... Strange and Ever After by Susan Dennard. And then there is one last book that was a gift to me. This was a Christmas slash birthday gift from one of my best friends. The book is The Broken Way by Anne Voskamp. And um, I'm really excited to get to this. It will probably take me like six months to read because Anne Voskamp's writing style is just like really difficult to get into and read. But the previous book I read by her, uh, 1000 Gifts, was life changing to me. So I'm interested in seeing what this one is like as well. And then the last three books I am going to show you guys are all books that I have already read. And I just wanted to add to my permanent collection, The Girl from Everywhere by Heidi Heilig. The sequel to this is on my shelf. And I thought that was going to be a trilogy, but it's actually only a duology. So I'm really even more excited to get to the sequel to this when I do on my shelf. Breadcrumbs by Anne Ursu, which is one of my favorite middle grade novels. It just, in a lot of ways, feels like my childhood distilled into book form. Surprise, surprise. I purchased A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallaro to add to my collection. I um, am hoping very soon to pre-order A Case for Jamie because it A, releases very soon. So if I want to pre-order it, it better be really soon and B, I really, really want it. Um, but it is the book that I'm using to like dangle in front of me. So I have literally one more book to read before I'm allowed to pre-order it. And so that is the scoop. And those are all of the books, at least here in front of me, that I have acquired and continued to hold on to since I wrapped everything on my shelf. Now I'm going to go wrap these and pack them up because I'm actually going to like ship them all home because I'm moving in like two weeks. And uh, sometimes people ask me like, do you ever regret having wrapped your books on your shelf because you can't find them, etc, etc. And this is like the one time that I like deeply regret that all of these are wrapped because I am not sure I would choose to move all of these books with me if they were unwrapped. But because they're wrapped and because I am unwilling to unwrap all of them just to check to see what is what, they are all coming with me. Through this project of unwrapping, I've gotten a lot better at being like, I'm never going to read that. I'm never going to finish that. I can just get rid of that. And before I was like, oh, I just will leave it on my shelf until I finish it. But now I'm like, no, if I'm not going to read it, then I'm not going to read it. And so it's like a double-edged sword because I guess I just like started the wrapping project too late. I wish I was further along in my unwrapping. I'm just going to pack a bunch of boxes full of wrapped books and it'll be great. Yeah, thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys later. I will probably film at least two more videos before I move and then I will have a whole new setup in the future. So um, stay tuned for that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you later. Bye!